Hello and welcome. Chef Pennington here. Today we're doing my Aunt MC's peanut butter chocolate bars. This is amazing, guys. All right, we've all had Reese's peanut butter cups and all that stuff, and it's really great. But here's the thing. We're going to use a, a wonderful ingredient here, and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. It's going to come up, but the, the middle of this is going to have a texture very similar to a Butterfinger, which is just really taking a Reese's peanut butter cup to the next level. So this is such a great recipe, guys. You're going to love it. So we're going to use crunchy peanut butter. You don't have to, but with the wonderful texture, the Butterfingers type texture we're going to create. It's not coming from this. This is not the secret ingredient. This just adds to it. So please get the crunchy. So important. So we're going to start off with a cup. You can go a little bit more if you want. You can be a little off in these measurements, which is nice. And we're using my Aunt MC's recipe. She is known as a wonderful cook. She's a, everybody loves her. She's just one of the most amazing people you ever meet in your life. And she's a master of dessert. So if it's her recipe, you know it's going to be good. So we're getting a bunch of butter in there. We're making peanut butter, right? We're just up in the ante on the butter, which is equals deliciousness. Everyone knows we love butter at butter and time. And always use high quality butter, please. Now, as far as the recipe and all the ingredients and everything, no problem. I've got a printable recipe card link that'll be in the description below. Or you guys can just go to butterandtime.com and Google the word, which would be peanut butter chocolate bars. So whenever you guys are going and you're mixing, you always got to scrape down your bowl and make sure you get all the way into the bottom. It's so important. It's easily overlooked. And that one bite that one person gets, it wasn't mixed together right, you know, that can be kind of a bit of a fail. So we're using confectioner sugar. It's also called 10x sugar. If y'all have never heard that before, learned that in culinary school. No one calls it 10x, but it's kind of cool to know. So we're getting our powdered sugar in there. I like to go half and then the other half. You could technically probably go and put all of it in if you want, but whenever we turn it on right here, we all know what can happen. It could just go poof in your face, so I do half. It's no big deal. It only takes a couple moments. And that's one of the cool things about this recipe. It really doesn't take that long. Here we go. Secret ingredient, guys. Boom! Vanilla wafers. Who doesn't like vanilla wafers? We grew up eating vanilla wafers. They're awesome. We're going to use about 45 cookies. As to my NMSE's recipe, she wants 45, so we're using 45. If you guys wanted to go with 50 or 55, it would not hurt the recipe at all. I actually am thinking about trying that next time. So that's completely up to you guys. We're going to get into a bag, and this is where it matters. We're going to crush them up, but don't pulverize them into dust. We want that little bit of texture left over from not crushing them too much to give us that Butterfinger texture. We want the texture to actually show up in our mix here. So we're going to incorporate them. And mix everything together and we're getting close to the next step which is going to be we're going to make a wonderful ganache which is really heavy cream and chocolate mixed together and we are going to be using a semi-sweet chocolate and Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli is one of the really great brands out there these days and I highly suggest using it. I'm pretty much exclusively using that for my chocolates nowadays because every time I use it the recipe turns out great and I know that helps you know. Great ingredients helps the cook do a great job. So we're going to get it into a 9 by 13 casserole dish. You could use whatever. If you want to make the, the cookies thicker, you could. Um, one of the things that I did test with this was I, I, after I took all the photos and everything, I took one of the pieces I put in the freezer, and I had it for dessert that night. Really, really liked it coming out cold. That with a little bit of ice cream, and forget about it. It's so good. So ganache. We got our chocolate, so we start melting it down, get it soft, then add in your whole cream, I'm sorry, your heavy cream, and just bring everything together. It'll come together pretty quick. And then here's a secret ingredient, another one, a little pinch of salt. It might seem odd, but it really does help. It really brings that flavor of chocolate to the party, which chocolate really tastes like chocolate, but trust me, that little bit of salt does do something. Another cool ingredient. <laughs> this is essentially Spanish caramel sauce. Everybody in south of the border loves this stuff and i love it so much and it's fairly inexpensive on the link uh, the recipe link and everything i talk about this stuff and how to make it yourself and it's not like you would think when it comes to making regular caramel so i suggest go take a look it's pretty cool i even have a link to alton brown where we talk about how to make your own vanilla wafers so it's a good post it's a really good post you guys check it out so you can use as much of that caramel as you want and then we're just going to take the ganache and put it on top I like starting coming down the middle and then doing the sides and then whatever works for you. Just makes it a little easier to spread it out, having a little bit of a 
a system as to when you're pouring it out so it doesn't just all end up on one side and just gets the job done quicker. Now, these are, you know, bars, so they don't have to be perfect, 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 but they're going to be perfect anyway. <laughs> so we're just getting any air bubbles, anything like that, just letting everything get really nice and smooth together. And we're going to do something cool here. We're going to do something decorative. So you can totally skip this if you wanted to, but I've got some powdered sugar in there, and I, I will use a total of three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. So we've made a frosting. We're going to get into a plastic bag. Everyone's got plastic bags, so we don't need a piping bag or anything like that. This is just a really simple thing. You're going to notice here when I zip it, I don't go all the way, so that the air still will release, and just push it into a corner. Couldn't be any easier. And this is all about the texture. Like You don't have to put three tablespoons in there. You could put more or less. What we want is to make sure that this icing will run. So you'll see here, we want to make sure that it's not too thick. And I've got a little bowl there just to test. That's really important so it doesn't make a mess. And I can tell that it's dripping the way I want it to. And we're going to make lines. We're just going to go up and down. But that's not the end of it. We're going to do something really cool here in a second. So you can use as much or as little as you want. You know, start thick and then it gets a little thinner at the end. I like the little thin one, so I think that adds a nice bit of decorativeness to it. And here's where we're going to get cool. We're going to take two, two toothpicks and you want to get them to where you can hold them where they're not just right next to each other. We want a little space between them. And then we're going to do a cool design. We're just going to drag it back and forth. We're not going to do anything else. And we're going to get these really cool designs. You know, we eat with our eyes, and we're going to take the time to make something. It's usually fun to make it look nice, right? I, sh I certainly love doing that. So, you think that would be good enough, but we're going to go just a little further. We're going to reinforce the Reese's. This is another texture that we're adding to the dessert. And you certainly don't have to, of course, but we're just going to cut these into quarters, and we're going to randomly place them all over the place. And... It does provide great texture. Plus, you'll be able to taste how much better your peanut butter cups are than Reese's. <laughs> it's a true taste side by side in the same bite. And more delicious caramel. You guys could go crazy with this or a little bit, or obviously you could leave it out. But I think, look at it, it really offers a nice design. Really fun. It's a way to take an old school peanut butter chocolate bar and give it a little bit of a chef -iness to it. That looks really cool, guys. I'm, I'm very... Happy to offer this to you guys. I hope you try it and leave me, you know, this will be on YouTube. So go to the description down there and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But this is so good. So good. Must try. Come check out some of our other posts here. I've got a playlist here. You guys can check out some of our other desserts. And here's a link back to our website. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you guys there. Go ahead and be sure to subscribe below. Click the button. Like you know, everything's going to be on the website. You guys have the best. Take care.